your unique story, our global audience. Global One Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global One Media's exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with company executives sharing insights into their unique journey. I'm your host, Ashley Berry, and we're thrilled to welcome Ryan Confer, Chief Financial Officer at Genprex. That's a clinical stage gene therapy company focused on developing life-changing therapies for patients with cancer and diabetes. Genprex's technologies are designed to administer disease-fighting genes to provide new therapies for large patient populations with cancer and diabetes who currently have limited treatment options. They're listed on NASDAQ as GNPX. Ryan, thank you for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Ashley, and I appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, as we were saying, you know, this is such an important mission. Let's start with an overview of Genprex, maybe explaining why you're specifically targeting large patient populations such as cancer and diabetes. Yeah, so Genprex has been around since 2009. Uh, we were born out of research out of MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is a you know world-renowned uh, research center uh, in, in the field of oncology. And our research scientists there um, have been focused on gene therapy for a number of years and have essentially taken what we've learned in the gene therapy space over the last you know, decade uh, or two and are adapting it to these large patient populations. So you know, when people think of gene therapies, you traditionally think of these uh, niche uh, markets or, or small patient populations that have either altered or mutated genes and the therapies uh, are essentially replacing or repairing those genes to fix the problem. Um, typically, gene therapies are delivered with a viral delivery system. And so uh, when, when they are given to the patient, they usually can only be given once. Uh, we've essentially adapted our gene therapy uh, in, in both uh, in, in cancer uh, to, to be formulated with a, a non-viral delivery system um, that way we can redose patients uh, with our specific gene therapy um, for cancer treatment. So um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, it gives us the opportunity to, to deliver uh, several types of genes to several different types of cancers, uh, as well as work um, synergistically with a number of approved therapies. Uh, and so we believe this, this is the opportunity to bring essentially gene therapy to the masses. Yeah, really, really amazing. Uh, let's let's pinpoint uh, a little deeper. So you have two innovative gene therapy programs, one specifically for lung cancer, the other for diabetes, you briefly mentioned. How do these technologies work specifically? Yeah, so in uh, oncology, as I mentioned, we're focused in lung cancer. Uh, our research scientists have identified a specific tumor suppressor gene. Uh, every human has tumor suppressor genes. They're born with them. Uh, unfortunately, when cancers progress, um, a number of these tumor suppressor genes get systematically deleted. And these tumor suppressor genes really act as like a brake pedal uh, with cancer development. Uh, they're there uh, and they're meant to essentially uh, cause apoptosis, which is programmed cell death in, in cancer cells, as well as stifle the growth of, of cancer. And what we find in lung cancer is that a large percentage of patients, over 80%, have either no TUS2 tumor suppressor gene or significant depleted levels. And so what we're doing is we're just reintroducing this tumor suppressor gene that's naturally occurring into the body into the cancer patient so their body can fight uh, cancer as it normally should. Mm. And so with that in mind, it's, it's a very, um, you know, it's, it's a very friendly uh, therapy. Uh, a lot of patients uh, are able to con continue their, their normal activities and jobs while taking our treatment. And it's very natural, too, in that the body uh, is familiar with these tumor suppressor genes. And so um, it, it's unlike chemotherapy that really, really destroys your body. Uh, we found it to be very safe uh, in clinical trials to this point. We have two previous clinical trials where we examined this in over 60 patients. Um, so we're really excited about the prospects of, of providing a, a therapy to cancer patients that's, that's really safe. Um, for our diabetes program, it's a little bit different. We do use a viral vector, but we uh, are able to deliver it in a very unique way. And so we do this through an endoscopic procedure uh, whereby the gene therapy is delivered directly to the pancreas. And our genes here uh, actually transform alpha cells in the pancreas into beta-like cells. And it's, it's beta cells in the pancreas that actually produce insulin. 
And so we call them beta-like because these cells do produce insulin, but they're different enough to evade the immune response uh, seen by the body for type 1 diabetic patients, which is really, really key. Uh, we believe that this gene therapy has the ability to both uh, fight type 1 and type 2 diabetic, uh, diabetic patients. It's, like, it's just it's just amazing. It's fascinating. It's like the way of the future. You know, if you think about as as you know, you and I were talking. Uh, we all we all know somebody who who unfortunately we're all affected by this. Um, and to to hear of therapies like this and to understand this, and especially in the cancer space, uh, as opposed to chemotherapy, having the body be able to fight itself really is truly fascinating. And as I said, like the way of the future, and it has to be such better quality of life for the patients. So you know, let's talk about the next big milestones you're currently focusing on at Genprex. Yeah, so we have two clinical trials in oncology ongoing uh, that are enrolling patients. Uh, one is in combination with a drug from AstraZeneca called Tegriso. Uh, the other is in combination with a drug from Merck called Keytruda. Both of these drugs are the highest grossing uh, sales drugs of uh, each of the respective companies. Uh, for our uh, Tegriso combination study, we call this a claim one. It has an FDA fast track designation. And we just recently announced uh, the phase one uh, clinical trial has come to, uh, we have had the last patient enrolled in that portion of the trial. We're moving into our phase two portion uh, imminently. Our Keytruda clinical trial, we refer to as a claim two. Uh, this clinical trial also has an FDA fast track designation. And we've stated that we believe that we will finish the phase one portion by the end of this year. We are also launching a third clinical trial in combination with a drug called Tacentric, which is a drug from Genentech. And this is going to focus on small cell lung cancer. Um, our first two clinical trials are on non-small cell lung cancer. So we are effectively covering all of the lung cancer market uh, with, with our treatment regimens. And we expect to dose the first patient in this clinical trial uh, in the third quarter. Um, we've also designed each of our clinical trials, once they get to the phase two, uh, to do these small uh, uh, cohorts called expansion phase two studies, where we'll be able to get to data readouts um, uh, much quicker than our randomized phase two. Uh, we haven't given any timetables on when we will release that data, uh, but it will be much quicker than we had previously expected. Um, and then... Uh, lastly, in, in diabetes, uh, we had some really significant data that came out in February. Uh, we've been testing our gene therapy in, in diabetes in the preclinical setting. Uh, we had announced data that we had tested in eight non-human primate monkeys, uh, and we showed that uh, we were able to create new beta cells when there were no beta cells existing, and that these beta cells were indeed producing insulin and allowing these diabetic monkeys to stabilize their glucose over time and reduce their insulin requirements. Uh, so it's a pretty big milestone, not only for the company, but we also believe it's a pretty big step forward in the industry. Um, we have additional sponsored research going on with our diabetes program, both in type one and type two. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we come out with new data in that program, we'll be releasing it anytime. Terrific. So you're you're listed on NASDAQ, you know, speaking to the younger generation, the younger audience, the millennials, the Gen Zs, uh, you know, this is really important. And this is the way of the future. Um, you know, where can our audience learn more about Genprex? And do you have any final words for them, for that audience specifically? Yeah, um, our, our website is a, a wealth of information at gemprex.com. I mean, there, there really is a lot, both technical, um, scientific information there, but also very uh, high level. Uh, I, I do wholeheartedly believe that this is the future in both oncology and in diabetes. And, and, and one thing that, that is really interesting in the diabetes space, um, the, the main treatment uh, in diabetes is insulin. It's been insulin for over 100 years. Insulin was first introduced in 1922. And you know what we are trying to do, I believe, is highly disruptive to the marketplace because if we are able to convert existing cells into beta cells, and these cells actually can produce their own insulin, then you know the need for uh, synthetic insulin uh, becomes you know less of a need and, and really uh, represents a fundamental shift in treatment modality uh, in this industry. So we're super excited about it. Um, we're super excited about the collaborations that we have uh, with with uh, the oncology program and 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 um, 
the, 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 each of the acclaimed clinical trials. And we're excited by, um, you know, by where the, where the diabetes program is going as well. Well, really excited to follow your journey. Ryan Conford, Chief Financial Officer at Genprex. It was a true pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for sharing these impressive insights and your inspiring mission. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Ashley.